Hey everybody, Vermont Dog Trainer Ian Grant here, and today I'm going to be working with Atari on his impulse control around objects. Also, it's, it's another way that we work with dogs through their resource guarding as well. So I've got a little bed set up over here. I'm gonna twist the camera around for you guys to see. So he's going to be put on this bed and I'm gonna be doing a little work with him staying on the bed and I have a box of goodies that I'll be putting down on the floor in and around him. So he's been doing this for a while and uh, he actually goes home on Monday, today is Friday. So this is kind of the last session I'll be doing with him before uh, the rest of my staff just kind of reinforces everything with him over the weekend. So this is, uh, I'm gonna get started with him. Hopefully this works like this, so you guys can kind of see what's, uh, what's going on. Yeah, I think that'll work, come on. So during that delay, this little guy just grabbed the Mr. Clean Eraser off of the sink, which is a perfect teachable moment to show him that we can't have this. So during this silence, he had it. Uh, I don't want to give this back to him to show you because obviously there's cleaning stuff on it and he's not allowed to have something like this. So I'm going to try to create something here that he can have because a lot of times people go through this, this scenario of their dog has something and how do we get it away from them, right? We get into this tug of war game kind of thing here and I've got the leash here because obviously, you know, depending on your dog, um, and what their situation is, you know, aggression or non-aggression or whatever, uh, that can really have an effect on what you're doing with the dog. So this is always good backup to have. As you see, this guy's playing and he's having fun with it. I'm not giving him any reason to play with it other than just hanging on to him. So I'm not adding life to it <clears throat> at all. So if I wanna get this away from him, um, I'm first gonna make sure the, the leash is and see, this is also a, a big move too, is that they, the dogs get this, uh, they throw that paw up and over. So this is what I'm gonna do. Shh. I want him to immediately know that there's something up. And now I'm grabbing it and I'm holding it. And I'm gonna hold a little pressure with a leash here too. And the more he lets go, the more I gather. Now there's very little pressure on the leash until he gives it to me. Shh. And now we have respect. So now I'm gonna practice this. So guys, what I was going to show you just took a left turn and I have to go with this right now. I can't be like, okay, I'm gonna throw this away and get back to what I'm going to show you. No, this has to go back and this is something that we need to work on right now. So, as long as I get the respect from him shh, of the space, then I will give it back to him. So, he can take it back, and I'm going to let him have it for a little bit. It's not the sound that I'm making. I know it's the shh sound. It, it, it's the intention behind it, and also the relationship. I just got back from a walk with him. We worked on a structured walk. And a lot of times people will run right up and then grab this quick from their dog. And their dog's like, oh, hell no, I'm gonna take it and I'm gonna run. Or, oh, this has a lot of value to it, so I should hang onto it tighter, or maybe I should guard it and growl and, and show my teeth. So again, this is why if you're going to work on this with your dog, uh, keeping a leash handy is, <laughs> is a nice little safety net to have. Some people will negotiate whatever you feel like you've gotta do, but, I'm gonna wait for him to actually have it in his mouth and not just be picking at it. Shh. So I might move in here too. See, he's wondering, he's like, what is this guy doing? Shh. So I bumped him with my toe. If you feel necessary or you feel like you wanna do this, see how he brings it? So leash is straight here. It's not super tight. You guys can see it move, right? Now I have it. And now watch, the thing is most people will take this and they take it and they go, oh, look at him. He's like, where did it go? And then we start hiding it on him. See, see how he's wanting to look for it? 
He's like, wait, where did it go? See, this is a looking up like what's, what's going on, what's happening. What's happening with this direction that you're giving me. But if we have it out here and show him that he can't have it, see, he's staring at it. All the more reason not to give it to him. Shh. All the more reason not to give it to him. I did not ask him to go down. I did not give him the command to go down. He felt like he needed to do that. He's still staring at it. So just because he's on his belly doesn't mean he still doesn't, he doesn't want this. If he gives up on it completely and he's like, okay, I realize I'm not going to get it, then maybe I'll give it to him. But there's structure in this. These are those, some of those interactions that are key, like walking out the door under control, going for a walk under control, feeding time under control, toy time under control. These are all little interactions that get balled all up into your relationship and your bond with the dog. See, even if it moves, you can see his head. See the staring and the wrinkle in the forehead? <clears throat> then you can present it to him. Then you can give it to him. Say, yeah, buddy, you can have a little fun. You can't shred it, but you can have a little fun. Be a dog. Hey. So he's picking at it. So I'm just telling him, you can't pick at it. We do this long enough, he'll learn he can't pick at it. Ah, look at this. Look at this, buddy. Nice job. Yeah. Look at you. That's pretty good there, buddy. Yeah. Yeah, completely moved away from the object. Completely moved away. That was awesome. And that was on his own. So that was like, okay, I'm, I'm probably done with this for right now. Good. So now I'm going to guide him over to the bed. <clears throat> and now I can go back to doing what I was doing because I accomplished what I needed to on there. So at home, you just need a designated space. That's all. I just want his brain under control here. So I'm just gonna corral him back up onto here. He sat on his own, I'm not asking him to sit. But now we know this is a key toy here. So I can give it a little life. And he's gotta learn that this is also mine. So he could get that to that a lot faster than I could right now. So this is where you get the respect aspect of working with your dog and you can create all the distance that you want in the world. And then once you have that accomplished with one, then you can bring out higher value like treats, all sorts of good treats. Shh. See his, his uh, focus here? So I'm not gonna go any further until I start to see some. Till I start to see some relaxation. So he just sniffed it. He's using his nose, which is better. There we go. There, there. Hips rolled over. Now we can continue. And just like in the kitchen. Oops, I dropped food. <laughs> Let's see, see how he looks back at me here. So we can bring out other goodies. Stuffed animals. See his focus here? So I'm not gonna wing it across the room if he's hyper-focused on this. So in the beginning, if you wanna teach this to your dog, we're just putting them on the bed and we're just moving around making sure they stay on the bed. That's all. 
This looks a lot like place, but it's not place. I didn't tell him to go there. I didn't give him the command to go there. And this isn't the end game. I want him to learn how to regulate his state of mind. So then once he's learned that from here, then you don't need the bed. Then you don't need the place. So this is gonna get dropped. See how it changes? Now that's staring, don't, don't take that like he's perfectly relaxed. This one's got some sound in it. So I'm just gonna wait for him to just settle a little bit before I drop this one. You have to look for this body language when your dog settles, then you kick it up a notch. And of course, then you have tennis balls. Some dogs, this is like crack. So whether you want to call it desensitizing, getting them used to it, any fancy terms, dog training terms, whatever you want to call it. I'm just watching this body language as I'm bouncing this because this is going to be hard work for him. There's a lot of little quick little blinks going on. And I'm giving this life. See, he just started to give up on it. So now what, I'm gonna, what am I gonna do? Kick it up just a notch. I'm gonna let this thing bounce onto the floor. See the licking of the lips? He's just trying to process all this. So we've got five objects out here in front of him. And we're teaching him that he can't have these at this moment. All right, but what we want to basically be able to teach him is that if he starts to go for them, we have a correction sound built in. It's okay to say no to your dog, whether it's no, leave it, uh-uh, hey, stop, shh, whatever you want to use. See, now he's interested in something completely different. Hey, his job, get back up on here. I'm looking for state of mind. I'm not looking for body position. He's going to try this way. I'm blocking. And then I'm backing away. This is a big deal because now he's up on all fours. And I'm just moving towards him to tell him he's not allowed to get off there. And look at what it can produce. This is why I like to be quiet with dogs. You can observe their body language. And if you play this tape back, you will see and hear, actually play this tape back and don't look at it. You'll hear everything that I'm saying, obviously, and that's exactly what he's hearing. Then you can layer on all the commands you want on top of this. If you want to tell him to go to place, that's fine. But to me, I want to teach him and work him through all of this first before I, I teach him all this language. I don't know, just my way. It's not the only way. And it's not the way. So now we have to put this stuff away. So just nonchalantly go back to doing it. You're not doing this to give it any life, but we also have to end it. So I'm gonna end it. And I'm also watching him. Shh. Because we have to end, look, I go back to where I was, and then I'm going to finish. The biggie here. Good. So I notice I approach softer. Now I can bring him off of here. That a boy. There. And then we can love on him for doing such a good job. Yes. Yes. Now you can talk to him if you want to, right? Atari, he's a good boy. He's a good boy. Yes, he is. See, it makes sense to love on him like this state of mind. Look, this isn't like through the roof excitement. 
right? This is nice. Good, good. Let me know if you have any questions, comments, anything. I'd love to hear it. Or if there's anything else that you'd like to see, uh, please let me know. You guys have a great day.